Okay, today I want to tie a caddis pupa or sedge pupa. Uh, sedge flies, as you know, are very common in our rocky, stony rivers in, in, in South Wales. Um, the, the sedge, uh, the little pupa, builds a little... Um, well, the larvae build a little case at the bottom of the, the river and when it's time to hatch, uh, that little case is made out of stones and sticks and that sort of thing and it crawls around carrying that behind it. But when it's time to hatch, it comes up to the surface <coughs> pardon me, and it hatches out um, in open water or sometimes it gets to um, the side of the stream where it crawls up on the stones to hatch. Um, it's very vulnerable to trout um, when it's when it's doing that and to me it's more important the the pupa in this form is more important to the fly fisherman than the larva it breaks out of its case and it hatches out and you can see the segmented back on this fly which I think is important because that gives the impression of it bursting out of its shell out of its body where it splits the body um, points on this fly. I've put a little tail on it, which generally it doesn't have a tail, but this I feel gives a bit of movement in the water when you're fishing it. You'll see it's got a couple of antennae here, or horns as some people like to call them. And it's got these little eyes, which uh, show up on the natural, um, the natural pupa when it's in the water. Now, t I've taken my tie in, I've tried to take it from uh, John Goddard's book, waterside guide and here he shows a drawing of the pupa which I've tried to uh, imitate you will see the eyes there you'll see the two antenna coming over the back you can see the segmented body and you can see these sort of trailing legs and I've tried to sort of um, make my copy based based on that okay so the first thing I'm going to do is lead the body the lead I use is Uncle Jack's self-adhesive lead. It's lead with um, a paper backing on it that you tear off like this. Um, so then you've got this adhesive part. And I'm going to put this on. Uh, I just put one layer of this on, but if you are fishing fast, deep waters, you may want to put on two layers. Try to build up. Um, if you do put on two layers, try to keep the shape of the of the pupa. That's a sort of tapered shape. Okay, that's it there. That's enough. I'll nip off this little bit of surplus here. I use my old scissors for this cutting of lead and things. I use them for that sort of stuff. I don't cut. I don't use my feather scissors. Okay, you smooth things down a bit and we give it a layer of uh, silk. I've waxed this silk so we can just um, bash on with it. When you give a layer of silk like this um, it's not a true layer really. I got to do it in open turns because the windings will get down in amongst the the lead joints. So I do them fairly open turns like this because I think it's better if we've got a bit of a coating, a, a bit of a foundation silk for the uh, for the fly. I call it a fly, but it, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a pupa. Right, I'm going to put the tail on, and for this, I, I've got dyed partridge, ordinary partridge, a couple of fibres, been dyed yellow, so I just tear a few off. Don't need many of these, just a couple to give a suggestion of a bit of a tail. That's all. It'll be a bit like that. See, this just gives, when you're fishing it, it'll give a bit of movement to it. Okay, now at this stage, I find it easier to put on the eyes. And the eyes I use are the dumbbell, little dumbbell eyes made of nylon, which you've uh, 
if you want to see how I make these little eyes, uh, if you look at the tie-in, uh, the video of the Stonefly Nymph, uh, you will see at the end of that video, you will see me making these little eyes. I put them on, I'll show them to you in a moment, try to get them fairly even. Once I've got them like that, I can give some figures of eights just to keep them in position. Okay, so I've got the lead underbody, I've got the tail and I've got the eyes on. So I'm going to take this down, not too far because I'm going to now tie in the shell back. And the shell back that I use is the brown body stretch from Venyards. It's actually a bit too wide, as you can see, so I just cut it lengthways to the desired length I want. And I've, so I've got a piece like this, and I put a little bit of a pencil point on it to, to uh, help me to, to tie it in. And I tie it in about there. Now it's important to try to get this so that it comes over the centre of the pupa. If it doesn't do that, I'll take it off. It's got to come over like that. So that looks okay where I want it to be. Now the next thing I'm going to tie in now is the rib, which gives it the segmented body. And for the rib, I use a yellow embroidery, um, what do you call this? A yarn. It's an embroidery yarn, which I buy from a, a knitting or Dunelm. Uh, it's four or five sort of ply, and I just take two sections, cut a piece off, take out two of the plies, if that's the right expression. I wax them like this, so they stay together and makes it more um, durable. And I tie them in like this, just straightforward. Tie them in so everything now is at the back of the fly of the of the pupa. Right, I take the silk back up. When you're tying a material, I'm trying to keep this uh, um, tapered appearance to the the fly. Uh, the, the, I keep calling it a fly, but you know what I mean. It's a pupa. <coughs> right. Now I'm going to rib this body. I've parked my silk up the front here, and I'm going to to rib it to give this what I call important segmented way. So I bring this rib underneath like this, ready to start. Bring over the shell back and I give one wind. Now it can be a little bit difficult to start off because of the shape of the hook which I'm using. And I, I want to, I've given one over, I'll come to the hook in a moment, and now I'm giving two under. These are all touching turns. So there's one over, two under. One over again. And two under. To give me the two under, I keep drawing the shell back, touching turns. Two around the hook. Over again. Just one over the top and two under. One, two, come over, one, pull back, one, two, come over. This will be the last one there. One over, pull back, and now I'm going to tie it off. You notice I parked my silk up at the eye. That was just temporary. And I'm going to bring it back now to secure this ribbon. I do that like that. Just secure it like that, and I'll nip that off. I leave the shell back because I've got more use for that. Now at this stage, I hope you can see that. Can you see that segmentation? 
which is what I'm trying to achieve as if it's the pupa trying to break out of his body. We'll come to that in, in a moment. Right, the next thing I'm going to put on are the legs. The legs, and they also imitate sort of wing buds. For this, I like to use a French partridge feather, which has been dyed orange. And I, I, I waste a lot of this here to, to demonstrate this to you. Normally, I would, um, wouldn't waste as much. I'd be using some of these feathers in sea trout flies or something like that. Just bear with me when I get this to where I want it. We don't need an awful lot of this because it's not a hackle as such, it's just to imitate legs and sort of wing buds. So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm drawing it down, I'm going to nip out that tip. I think I may have been out of camera there, so I'll show you. I drew it down. I'll be doing this again for the front set of legs, but I'm left now with that shape. And they go on just like this. Just like that here. Bend them over and I give a couple of winds. If you are tying this fly, it's important at this stage that you don't give these winds, the first couple of winds, don't make them too tight. If you do, the, the, the legs spring out. Now they're on, I can give them a good old winding down. But um, if you wind them too tight, they go out of shape. <coughs> okay, now at this stage, I put on a bit of a thorax. I like a thorax, as you know, and I use two strands of peacock curl. Peacock, as you know, has got this lovely, attractive sort of metallic green sheen about it. Nip off the ends because they're always a bit brittle. And I'll tie these two in together by the tips just to give me this bit of a thorax. Like that. Okay, I, t I just wind these two around. Just like this to give a bit of a thorax. Not too important, but I just think it looks better. And um, Peacock Curl does have some sort of magical attraction for trout. Don't know how or why, but I love it and I'm always trying to work it in somewhere because I've had so much success with it. Now that's the bit of a thorax we've got on there. And now I'm going to bring over the shell back to tie it down as a sort of a thorax cover. Just there, like that, bring it back, and I'm going to put on some more legs. So I'll go back. These legs do two jobs. They're either wing buds or they're, they're, they're legs, whatever you want to call them. They look pretty good on the pupa. I got that, where I've just simply stripped the feather and now I'm going to draw these down like this to nip out the tip. Something like that. And I'll nip out this tip. See that? Left with that again which now goes on right up tight behind the eyes. These are a lovely colour and I think they work well on this fly because when you're fishing it, it's a nice soft feather and it gives a sort of pulsating action in the water. Okay, while I'm at that stage, I'll have a look at things to make sure they're all okay. It all looks okay to me. First set of legs are, are there. I can pull them out and straighten them up afterwards. Now I'm going to form the head. And for the head I use a bit of ice dub. Don't use very much at this stage. 
very very small in fact that's that maybe too much but um i can remove some if it is too much i'm going to form the head and i i wind this around in front of the eyes to form the head so you'll see what i'm doing come back here there 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 that forms a head bring myself to the front bring the body stretch material over and I tie down in front like that while it's there I bring my silk underneath back behind the eyes and I pull this back over and I tie it down like that now give a good wind in there and I will now remove this bit of shell back right the next items are eye, uh, horns or the antenna as they should probably be rightly called and what I simply do is get a black hackle like this and I strip all the fibers off it um, <coughs> I don't know if you can see but if you look along the side of it it's got a sort of little markings where I've stripped the hackles off where I've stripped the feathers off so I simply now cut this to size and I'm left with that and I get my measurement which is about there for one of them which I tie down now sometimes these can go out of shape a little bit but it they soon lie down when you're fishing them in the water that's one on I'll do the other nip off the end of the feather get the length I want I'm matching it up with the other one now for length which is about there trying to get them to sort of curve a bit over the body a bit like that now they're there tie them down pretty pretty good there right bend the stalks back tie them down and I will nip off that one looks a fraction longer than the other I'll nip off the surplus so there we have the two horns there going over the fly at this stage I put a little eye step again very small amount a real pinch just to hide the windings behind the head where I'm going to finish off the fly just do that that's it and now I'll put on the whip finish it mixes in with the eye stub the silk is the same color so you'll hardly see it but when it's pulled up tight it'll do the job okay needle in I only gave three winds draw it up see it flexing so that's done now I'm going to nip the silk and I will apply some varnish I've got a stray fiber there right they're on nice and strong those horns now I'm going to put on the varnish head varnish on the silk to secure everything down I just put a bit on there and it runs into the eye stub and I put a little underneath like that wipe it off that's the fly that's the pupa finished now to show you 
his legs. It all form and work well in the water. Try to get him out to show you a bit. And I've got the the tail down here as well. So um, I'll get see if I can nip it out of the vise to give you a better look. If I put it in my little hackle pliers, hopefully you can see it better. Right, can you see the horns, the two horns? Can you see what I think most important is the segmented body? I think it looks very natural. How good is that? The, 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 the legs, which are imitating wing buds as well, are there. And we've got the eyes. So that's what I was trying to achieve, as you can see with uh, John Goddard's book here. Yeah. Got the eyes, you've got the antenna, you've got the trailing legs, little wing buds there. There's no tail, but I think the tail helps. But most of all, the segmented body, which the um, uh, the pupa, the larvae bursts out into uh, this pupa, and it comes out to be the fully finished fly. Okay, that's it. I hope you picked up a few tips there. And I, uh, I thank you for, for watching.